I love history. You can't tell yeah. me enough about this aircraft. Right. It's a World War II three-seat short-range bomber. It is the type of aircraft that George H.W. Bush, our former president, flew during the war. Also, Paul Newman served in one, and they still use it in wilderness fires as uh, water bombers. And I just think it looks so cool when it sits on the ground because those wings fold up. Why is that, Rob? Well, the wings fold up because there's not a lot of room on an aircraft carrier, and we want to put a <laughs> lot of airplanes on it. So they're able to fold those wings to keep those aircraft stored. Um, and also, that has got real big, beefy landing gear, too, oh, because wow. those things Look don't touch down very smoothly. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw this plane actually flying yesterday. They flew over a veteran center in Radcliffe, Kentucky. So if you were watching yesterday and you saw that fly over at the veteran center, this is the plane that you were seeing. It's got a really, really unique rattle in it. It almost, it, you can feel it almost throughout your whole body. Tell us about the nose art on it, uh, see, as we just went through there. So you know, in the Second World War, pilots uh, like to decorate their aircraft by putting nose art on. And you'll see everything from, uh, you know, uh, pictures of people's m mothers to pictures that are probably a little bit more risque <laughs> if you are into history at all. And so it was all designed a way, and a lot of times it wasn't the pilot that put it on, it was the crew chief, the person that maintains the aircraft, and the pilots would agree. Um, you still see that to some degree today, especially in Air Force bombers, but for the most part, we don't do that anymore based off of the amount of paint that it takes to continually keep the aircraft up to speed. You'd be repainting nose art all the time. It does have that sort of growl. It sounds like an old Jeep I used to own. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, that does. It's a very it sounds like my stomach when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it okay. It, we've taken a departure. The, yeah, uh, <laughs> it is a tremendous yeah. sound. So the the Avenger is going to be right here with us, performing for about eight minutes, and we're already a few minutes into it. Rob, tell us about the the moves that uh, he's making in this aircraft. So what he's doing now is he's repositioning to stay within sight of the crowd uh, and uh, the cameras here at Bowman Field and. What that, what that can simulate is the attack maneuver. So if you're flying one of these, they were very scripted in how they would come after an enemy ship uh, or they would bomb a land target. But let's take ships, for example, if they're going to drop torpedoes. They want to come at the ship from all four uh, directions so the ship can't concentrate defenses in any way. And they want to be able to uh, uh, keep the other assets at bay, like enemy fighters. That's why they have a turret in the back, if you notice. The round part in the back would have the tail gunner as a crew member's position to keep enemy fighters off the back. And then they would come in very low and release their torpedoes and then bank away sharply like that to get away from enemy fire. 